Have you ever wondered what happened to the once thriving cod fishing industry in the North Atlantic? Cod, a fish known for its preference for chilly waters, has long been a dietary staple for many communities. This humble fish, often referred to as the fish that built America, was so plentiful and valuable that it played a key role in the development of the American colonies and their trade with Europe. The cod fishing industry was more than just a source of income, it was the lifeblood of many coastal communities in Canada and the United States, particularly in Newfoundland and Labrador. Here, cod fishing was woven into the very fabric of the culture and identity. This industry was a golden age of prosperity and growth. Yet, like all golden ages, it was not destined to last. In the second half of the 20th century, the cod fishing industry began to face a crisis. The once abundant cod population began to decline drastically due to a variety of factors. As the 20th century rolled on, the once thriving cod fishing industry started to face a serious crisis. Overfishing was one of the main culprits. The pressure to catch more and more cod led to a situation where the fish couldn't reproduce fast enough to replenish their numbers. But it wasn't just about the quantity of fish being caught. The introduction of new technology also played a key role in the industry's downfall. Powerful trawlers came equipped with radar, sonar and electronic navigation systems. This meant that fishers could catch more cod than ever before. But this technology had an unintended side effect. Bycatch. Bycatch is when fishers catch species they weren't targeting. In this case, it was often capelin, shrimp and crab. These species played a crucial role in the ecosystem serving as food for cod and other predators like seals, whales and seabirds. Foreign competition also put a strain on the cod fishing industry. Fishers from all around the world were keen to get their share of the North Atlantic's rich cod stocks. This added to the already high fishing pressure and made the situation even worse. And then there was the issue of poor management. The authorities didn't put enough measures in place to control the fishing and ensure the sustainability of the cod population. This lack of regulation and oversight allowed the overfishing to continue unchecked. All these factors combined to create a perfect storm that the cod population simply couldn't withstand. The cod fishing industry was on the brink of collapse. The collapse of the cod fishing industry reached its peak in 1992 when the Canadian government declared a moratorium on cod fishing. This was a desperate measure to save the cod from extinction. But it also meant that around 40,000 people who depended on the industry for their livelihoods suddenly found themselves out of work. The moratorium was initially meant to last for two years, but the code showed no signs of recovery, so the ban was extended indefinitely. The moratorium was a desperate measure to save the cod from extinction, but it had far-reaching impacts. The immediate aftermath was felt deeply by the coastal communities whose livelihoods depended on the cod fishing industry. Overnight, about 40,000 people found themselves out of work, their skills and expertise suddenly redundant in a world that no longer had room for their trade. The social fabric of these towns and villages was strained to its breaking point. Unemployment skyrocketed, and with it, poverty levels increased. Families struggled to put food on the table, and many were forced to leave their homes and communities in search of new opportunities. The culture and identity that had once been intertwined with the cod were left adrift in the wake of the industry's collapse. The fallout was not only economic, but also psychological, leading to a surge in social problems within these communities. The moratorium was supposed to last for two years, but it was extended indefinitely, as the cod did not show any signs of recovery. The collapse of the cod fishing industry had ripple effects on the whole ecosystem. With the absence of cod, a top predator, the marine ecosystem was thrown off balance. Some species like capelin, shrimp and crab saw their numbers explode, filling the vacuum left by the disappearing cod. Meanwhile, other species such as seals, whales and seabirds faced a food shortage impacting their populations. The ecosystem's transformation didn't stop there. The lack of diversity and the altered food chain made the marine environment less resilient. It became more vulnerable to external pressures such as climate change, pollution and invasive species, further stressing the already fragile ecosystem. These changes were not isolated to the marine world. They echoed throughout coastal communities and beyond, 
triggering a global conversation about the dangers of overfishing and the importance of sustainability. The cod fishing industry collapse also raised awareness and concern about overfishing and sustainability. The ripple effects of this event continue to shape our understanding and management of marine resources today. The collapse showed the need for better regulation, monitoring and enforcement of fishing quotas and practices. This poignant lesson from the past has set the stage for a wave of new initiatives and innovations aimed at restoring the cod population and the marine environment. The establishment of marine protected areas where fishing and other human activities are limited or even prohibited has been a critical step in giving the ecosystem the breathing space it needs to recover and flourish. Simultaneously, the development of selective fishing gear like hooks, lines, traps and pots has helped to reduce bycatch and habitat damage while increasing the quality and value of the catch. To encourage sustainable choices, eco-certification and eco-labeling have gained traction, informing consumers about the environmental and social impacts of their choices. Of prime importance has been the involvement of local communities, whose livelihoods are intertwined with the health of these marine ecosystems. Together, we can learn from the past, act responsibly today, and hope for a better future for our oceans and our planet.